Pulling off a win in Warzone duos is incredibly rewarding, no matter how you get there. If you're that last man standing, you know that you outplayed or outsmarted 149 other players and that is a big achievement. By the same token, dropping 20 kills in a game, chasing down bounties and most wanted contracts for the entire match is also great fun. But when you combine the two together, I think that's something quite special. This video is going to be showing off and breaking down a 20 kill Warzone Duos win that we managed to pull off. I'll be covering the strategies that we used, the tactics, tips and tricks that allowed us to consistently wipe out enemy teams, as well as general advice on how I think you can replicate this sort of a win in Warzone. This is an action packed gameplay, full of gunfights across the map that feature some smart plays. So if you want to improve your performance in Warzone, then there's definitely plenty in this video that's going to help you out. We knew right from the start of the match that we were going for an aggressive game. For me, it's just as important to have a good time chasing down kills as it is to play tactically and conservatively when you're grinding for a win. Sometimes, having a change of pace in your gameplay really helps freshen things up. Although this game was definitely more on the aggressive side of things, that didn't mean that tactics and strategy went out the window. It doesn't matter how good of a player you are, tactics are the single biggest factor when it comes to winning gunfights and doing well in Warzone. You can be the most accurate player on earth, but if you're in an exposed position, you're going down just as fast as anyone else. We landed in this village near TV station, as it's an area we're both familiar with and know how to fight in. Our first objective in any match is to get loadouts as quickly as possible. Custom weapons means you can play exactly as you want to, whilst perks give you a massive advantage and increased level of security. Unfortunately, our plan to quickly loot up and get set was interrupted by the arrival of multiple enemy duos. In this situation, our best option was to try and clear around the enemies as soon as possible. Letting them gather loot would only have put us in a work position and made the gunfight harder to win. Pushing up as a pair meant we could easily overwhelm the first team we encountered. There's very little individual players can do to stop the wall of gunfire that two players wielding LMGs can lay down. It's also incredibly hard to tackle two enemy players at once, Hence why attacking as a pair is so effective. This is something that you're going to see throughout this gameplay. Despite wiping this team out though, we were caught off guard by another enemy duo, who decided to catch us at the end of our fight when we were vulnerable and that put an end to us pretty quick. Now I hope this early death demonstrates to you that just because you die early does in no way mean you're out of the running. Sometimes you're going to be caught out by other players and there's nothing you can do about that. As you'll have been able to tell by the title of this video, we were able to turn this game around, so never quit out just because you didn't get the best start to a match. After each of us finished off our gulags, we were faced with having our games hard reset. In this position, landing somewhere busy would just have resulted in our deaths again, as there's not a lot you can do when all you have is a pistol. It doesn't matter how good you are, throwing yourself at an enemy when you aren't stocked up on weapons and plates never ends well. Landing away from the flight path in Boneyard would give us a chance to grab some decent weapons and get back on our feet. Getting together the cash for a load on drop was still our top priority, and the best way of doing this is through contracts. We grabbed a bounty and started hunting down the poor solo who had suddenly found himself with a price on his head. It's worth noting again that we're not throwing caution to the wind just because we want some kills. You can see that I'm checking out cover, making sure we're not caught off guard and that we're trying to come up behind this enemy. Whilst we know where he is roughly, he also knows our position thanks to the warning meter a bounty gives you. This is always something to be aware of and is very much a double edged sword, as it is totally possible for him to guess our position which could put us in a risky situation. By playing more patiently and not just charging into a gunfight, we can drop this enemy without even taking any damage. We always work on the principle that there are two enemies unless we have some way of guaranteeing that there's one. We had no idea if this solo had a teammate or if he had a loadout. This is exactly why you can never just hope and charge at enemies without thinking, as you can easily find yourself getting mowed down if you make a poor judgement call. Think about and plan your actions. If you can mentally stay one step ahead of whatever is going on around you, you'll always be one step ahead of all the other players who are just reacting to whatever's going on. After picking up this quick kill, we could at last grab our loadouts. When you're going for this sort of an aggressive game, you need some serious firepower that you can rely on. As much as I like using a variety of weapons, the only real option is the Growl. I've got mine built for medium range whilst preserving mobility. I'm also running Ghost to keep me off of the UAVs, which is very handy when you're charging around the map like us. Now that we're both set, the cycle repeats itself. Grab a bounty. Fly to the best position. Chase down the enemy player. Make some money. 
The advantage of a strategy like this is that it gives you heaps of cash to play with, so we could both buy self revives for some extra protection. We also opted to go and grab another lowdown in order to acquire even more overpowered weapons. I decided for some close range capacity and grabbed the trusty MP5. Now I know these guns are the meta. Everyone uses them and they're very, very good guns. The problem is that so many players use these weapons that you yourself are forced to use them just to keep up. What's the point in using a gun that isn't the most powerful? I hate the meta and how these guns have affected the game, but sometimes you've got to embrace them for the best results. After this, the cycle continues. Grab a bounty, chase the bounty, kill the bounty, enjoy the money. After this, the best move to make was to get on top of airport with a helicopter. Having a helicopter gave us the best mobility we could hope for, and it's the whole reason we've got the ability to move around the map as much as we are. By moving to airport roof, again on our way to pick up another bounty contract, we're able to put ourselves in an incredibly strong position. There's no way up to this roof besides with a helicopter. We have cover all around us and can shoot down onto enemies who've got no real way of challenging us. Being in this position allows us to effortlessly wipe out Jews who never had a chance of fighting us off. This roof is the ultimate example of positioning resulting in kills. There's just no way to compete with this sort of high ground. This is where things start to get really interesting for us, as we've got ourselves a bounty in the airport tower. Everyone knows there's only one way up to the platform directly, but most people don't realise that you can reach it from the roof. Unfortunately for my partner, he decided to chance the cables up and was met with a pair of players he couldn't possibly kill. Now I'm rather proud of this little manoeuvre, as you'll see I was able to drop into the control tower from the rooftop, catching these players completely off guard. This surprise advantage lets me drop half of the duo and completely turns the tails of this fight as I now have the high ground. Here, a bit of patience is all that's needed to get the upper hand as by waiting for the RPG reload, I'm given a nice time window that lets me close the distance between me and the last remaining enemy. This fight shows just how quickly positioning can change the dynamics of any engagement. We went from a huge positional disadvantage to wiping out this duo with relative ease. After a quick run to the nearest buy station, we're back up to full strength. Now at this point, we're aware that we're rather late game with the ring shrinking, but that doesn't mean that we want to lay off on the aggression. We can see a most wanted target ahead of us, so naturally, we ran right at them. My teammate is running restock and stun grenades, which you'll see us just bombard the enemy with as soon as we figure out where they are. The reason this team dropped so quickly is because they backed themselves into a corner that they couldn't get out of. As a result, we were able to heckle them with explosives and then push our advantage. You should never put yourself in a position that you can't get out of, as getting stuck anywhere can spell the end of your game very quickly. Most wanted contracts are always extremely risky, that's the whole point of them. I would absolutely not advise completing them unless essential, as they turn you into a huge target for everyone on the map. At this point in the game, we finally decided that taking a smarter approach would probably benefit us given that we were approaching the final rings. Playing aggressively is one thing, but charging around for no real reason isn't a good idea. Once we recognise we were in with a strong chance of pulling off a victory, you can see us switch to a more defensive playstyle. We're managing a small area, watching lines of sight and waiting for the ring to shrink. When you're late game like this, you have to account for how the shrinking zone will affect the movement of other players. Predicting rotations will prevent you from being caught out by other teams who are all being forced to move together by the gas. Sometimes, you have to slow your game down and recognise the situation you're in. You can see we're making the most of the available high ground, using it to survey the area, plan our next move, as well as taking down enemies. We're also keeping a close eye on the team and player counter in order to figure out how many full teams we're left dealing with. Obviously, duos are far more dangerous than solo players. Figuring out how many solos and duos there are can really affect how you approach a situation. By playing in a more defensive way, we're able to survive as the last standing duo, which gives us a huge advantage over the solo players who are up against us. In the final rings, cover is the single most important factor. There's always a scarce amount of defendable areas around, so structures like these tents can be the difference between winning and losing. We're playing slowly and calculated, taking our time to armour up and avoid straying out into the open. Whilst it is a 2 vs 1 situation, a talented solo player can easily wipe out a duo who get cocky. But by playing slowly and working as a team, we're able to take out the last remaining enemy for the win.
This was a fast paced game of duos, full of gunfights that each had to be tackled in a different way. Throughout this game we focused on our tactics, using positioning and teamwork to our advantage. By working as an effective team, we were able to wipe out 20 other players. Some fights were more challenging than others, and there were plenty of times when we didn't have an advantage. The key is to figure out how to make the best out of every situation. It can be using explosives, rotating to a different position, taking the high ground, or any other number of things. If you can master recognising and adapting to the countless situations that can arise in Warzone, then you're going to have a permanent advantage over the other players in the lobby. Being an accurate player who's good at gunfights is one thing, being a tactical and smart team is totally different. I hope this video has helped you out and that you've been able to take away something from it that you can use to improve your own Warzone experience.